The birth of skyscrapers in the 1880s was a defining moment in the history of architecture, engineering and construction. High rises grew in popularity because of mass migration to urban areas. Urban city centers are appealing to live in because of accessibility to transportation, restaurants and shops. Although skyscrapers were first used as office spaces, they have become a popular housing option. High rises can increase the density of cities by providing more housing in a given area. They can also define a city's skyline and become the nucleus of an entire tourism industry. What I find even more exciting than the appearance of skyscrapers is the engineering behind it. These buildings allow humans to push the limits of materials, buildings that were impossible just a few decades ago no longer are. The term skyscraper is used pretty loosely, but it technically defines a structure that is over 492 feet or 150 meters tall. At least 50% of its height must be habitable. Every high-rise and skyscraper around the world is built with concrete and steel, two of the most versatile and valuable building materials. However, they are energy-intensive materials with massive carbon footprints. They can also make the interiors feel cold, harsh and uninviting. In the search for more environmentally friendly skyscrapers, designers have turned to good old-fashioned wood. The Stud House in London, which was built in 2009, was one of the first high-rises made of wood. It has nine stories and stands 99 feet or 30 meters tall. Brock Commons in Canada broke records as the tallest contemporary wood building. It has 18 stories and stands 190 feet or 58 meters tall. Mjørstenet in Norway, which was built in 2019, is now the tallest timber building in the world. It has 18 stories and stands 280 feet or 85 meters tall. As the timber skyscraper momentum grows, we're starting to see some outlandish proposals including a mixed-use tower in Tokyo, Japan that will contain retail, office, hotel and residential facilities. Another unconventional proposal is the Oakwood Timber Tower in London. This lightweight tower will have 80 storeys and stand 985 feet or 300 meters tall. The invention and mass production of steel and concrete made skyscrapers possible in the 1800s. They worked together to hold tall buildings upright and battle strong winds. Similarly, a very important human invention makes all these wood high-rises and skyscrapers now possible mass timber or engineered wood. Traditional lumber is strong against forces parallel to the wood's fibre growth, but it is vulnerable to perpendicular forces. Wood also lacks steel tensile strength, which is the ability to withstand pulling or tensile forces. Wood also lacks concrete's compressive strength, which is the ability to withstand compression or pushing forces. To improve the properties of wood and make it even stronger than steel and concrete, moisture-resistant glues are added in between layers of wood to make engineered mass timber products. Some examples are glue lamb or glued laminated timber, which consists of several layers of wood with the grain running in one direction. Cross-laminated timber or CLT consists of layers of wood in alternating directions. Laminated veneer lumber, or LVL, consists of thin layers of wood all stacked in the same direction. So, we have a basic understanding of how wood high-rises and possible wood skyscrapers work, but are they really better than steel and concrete construction? Are they going to save the planet, help cool the planet, transform construction, be a solution to climate change, or be the future of flat-pack cities? If you have watched any of my previous videos, you already know the answer to those questions. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've been told that a new product or technology is the Lego of construction. Let's take a critical look at wood skyscraper construction and examine its advantages and disadvantages. Mass timber structural members like floor slabs and columns can be cheaper than steel and concrete, particularly in volatile markets like we're experiencing right now. The lower weight of mass timber also reduces the cost of other structural members and foundations. For example, during the construction of a mass timber project called the Ascent in Milwaukee, a hundred support piles had to be driven into the soil rather than 200 for a similar heavy concrete and steel building. Even though we're in the early stages of mass timber construction, structural engineers say that mass timber projects are approximately 25% faster to construct than similar concrete and steel projects. 
the Ascent Tower, which we just discussed, was built four months faster than expected. I'm not sold on the increased speed of construction because prefabricated modular steel and concrete skyscrapers can be constructed in a matter of days. Contrary to what many people think, sustainably harvested wood can be more environmentally friendly than concrete or steel. The manufacturing of mass timber produces much less carbon than other materials and can sometimes be carbon neutral or carbon negative. During photosynthesis, plants and trees take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen. That carbon is locked into the tree so long as it doesn't rot or burn. This can reduce the overall carbon footprint of buildings. Wood for Good, a campaign by the timber industry, claims that producing a ton of bricks requires four times the amount of energy as a ton of softwood, while concrete requires five times, steel 24 times, and aluminum 126 times. It's important to note that trees to make mass timber are selectively cut rather than clear cut. New saplings are also planted for every tree that's cut down. Mass timber construction does not equate to deforestation. Be wary of misinformation on wood harvesting and wood construction. Another surprising advantage of mass timber is its superior fire resistance compared to steel. Wood will char on the outside, sealing the interior and protecting it from damage. Charred wood can also retain 85-90% to 90 of its structural integrity. Of course, mass timber isn't a miracle material. It has some disadvantages that prevent its wide adoption. Concrete and steel are able to withstand acids, alkalis and other corrosive substances better than mass timber. Foundations, structural cores and piers are still made of concrete. This sort of mass timber hybrid construction isn't a bad thing. By merging these materials, we can get the best of both worlds, stability and a lower carbon footprint. The decks on the upper floors of the Muirstenet are made of concrete to stabilize the building and keep it from swaying. Restrictive code requirements are another disadvantage. These wooden structures used to be limited to 85 feet or 9 stories, but you can now build up to 270 feet or 18 stories. Unfortunately, the International Building Code says that taller mass timber buildings must conceal all its timber members because of fire safety concerns. There's also a significant psychological barrier to overcome. Investors might see mass timber high-rises as a risky investment. The general public might see them as flimsy buildings prone to fires, earthquake damage and more. Finally, we cannot be sure that the trees used for mass timber are sustainably harvested, especially in countries that have looser restrictions on tree cutting. Before we move on, I'd like to introduce the sponsor of this portion of the video, Insulation for US. They are the largest US online retailer for insulation products. They ship nationwide with over 800 locations in their huge distribution network. Insulation for US is cheaper than big box retailers and they offer a $60 flat shipping fee on 80% of all products. Brands such as Owens Corning, Rockwell, Hunter Panels, R Max, Kingspan, Handy Foam Spray Foam, Bubble Wrap and more are available online to purchase today and to be delivered directly to your job site. Use promo code BELINDA5 to receive an additional 5% discount off your next order with insulationforus.com. Now back to the video. In conclusion, I am very excited about mass timber inventions and hybrid timber explorations. We are witnessing the very early stages of brand new building materials. Mass timber will continue to improve and we will be able to push the limits of buildings yet again. Of course, the material itself will not make high rises and skyscrapers magically energy efficient and they will not be the Lego of building, whatever the heck that means. We need good planning and good design to prevent these mass timber structures from being energy guzzlers. Let me know what you think about mass timber in the comments below. I'll link my Patreon page in the description. If you can support me, I'd really appreciate it. A big thank you to everyone already supporting me. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, and the notification bell too. Thanks for watching. See ya.